am excited to be here. Uh, I didn't know I was going to be doing this till about 7 o'clock last night. So, uh, But I am excited. I already had a word that I'd shared at Fort Worth at the uh, the event we had just got back from. And, and, it, and when I got done there, I always... Uh, you know, you walk away, sometimes you feel defeated when even after, you know, you get up here and you pour your heart and soul out after you've, after you've really worked at it to get something and, and, and you just feel defeated when you leave. And I remember leaving there and I was, I felt accomplished and I felt, uh, secure in that word. And I was grateful to get to give it. And, and, uh, I was going to give it two Wednesdays from now kind of be about the middle of the fast and so I was like I was really excited because I'm we're going to give this word in the middle of the fast and it's going to be when everybody's getting the midday shakes you know it's about <laughs> midday <laughs> midday you need that coffee or you need that you know about middle of the fast so uh I am excited and then David texted me last night that uh I was going to be preaching this morning and so uh well I'll just go ahead and get in the word and do you guys mind up if I open up in prayer here so, Father, we just come to you this morning, Father, and, and as excited I, as I am to give this word, Father, I don't want to let my excitement get ahead of what you had to say this morning. So, Father, I just ask that you just empty me and, and fill me with your presence this morning as we begin to give the oracles of God, and I just pray for the ground that it's fertile and it's ready to receive it. In Jesus' name, amen. And so, like David and, and Jim and, and uh it, this this morning, the the even the the worship and everything's kind of been lined up with what is going on, and then the word Big Jim just gave, and and David talking about our fast, and and who in here? Uh, this is going to be a questionnaire of who in here is starting the fast with us today uh, as a corporate fast. Or, and there's quite a few people in here that's starting the fast, and so my goal is to lighten the load up this this morning. Is I want to lighten the load up on you about this fast. Uh, I want to give you the mindset. God, I remember I, w- I was at a time in my life when, when I was always on the defense. We get on the defense rather than the offense. So God says, hey, I want you to change your thinking this morning. I'm going to teach you how to change your thinking. I want you to come at this from God, what not God, what do I have to give up? But God, what do I need to leave behind me to get to where you're taking me this morning? And so I want you to, to really just, just dig in right there and, and, and bear with me. Uh, but not a, I hope I make it through this fast (laughs) because I've been there. I mean, I'll be the first one to tell you, I started them really well. I, even our new year's resolutions and, uh, I, we've all started them. You know what I mean? Everybody's got good intentions, but intentions don't get you very far in life. Good intentions or bad intentions. Bad ones get you further back, but anyways, uh, so yeah, intentions don't get you very far in life. You know what I'm saying? So we can have good intentions, but until we can stick it out and see it through, we may never see the fruit of that. And uh, and so we'll just keep moving on. But I want to fast is something that I need to give up that that gets in the way of my relationship with God. And it's my time with God. More of him and less of me. Um, I fast to get the bad out. It's like getting the weeds to work up the ground so that you can get get ready to plant. And, you know, here we talk about seed and time and harvest and, and especially in what we do. We're always, we're, we're here and now, but we're planning for six months down the road. I'm planning for next season. And so uh, that's, that's a lot of, it's all about the process. What do I need to weed out to get to where God wants to take, take me? And uh, Jesus always challenged his disciples thinking, anytime I wanted God to do something in my life, I had to change the way I thought. Isaiah 55, 8, it says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor your ways, my ways, says the Lord. And the, and the, uh, the title of this message is Ready, Set, Go. And so the other day we were, we were headed to the, uh, I don't want to get too far ahead of myself, but we were headed to the event and, and we were just riding down the road and you know, a lot of times we'll, there'll be four or five of us in there and everybody will have their ear pods in or somebody will be, usually whoever's driving gets to, to control the radio and they get to play whatever they want. And so <laughs> you can always tell who has the worst taste of music because uh, if, the, if they have the worst taste of music, everybody's got their earbuds in, you know, and Justin was driving, so everybody had their earbuds in. <laughs> 
Anyway, so I was like, I was driving down the road and I was watching uh, a sermon on something and and the Lord was like, let's 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 change the atmosphere in here. Let's change the conversation. And so I ask everybody, what's your goal for 2022? You know, we all have goals in life. And, you, and if you don't have a goal in life, you need to set a goal in life. Even if it's next week or next month or, or six months from now, set a goal in life. Set something that you want to see change in. Something that you want to see new, good, grew, grew, uh, fruit, n- new growth. You need, to, you need to get that and, and be thinking on that. Even in your fast, hey, what am I fasting for? What do I, what do I need to let go of to get God... To get God in so he can take me where I need to go. And so, go turn with me in Matthew chapter 6. And uh, Jesus is right in the middle of a message here in Matthew. And he just goes ahead and addresses things that we as Christians do. It says, it's not if, if you give, or it's not if you pray, it's, or if you fast. It's when. And, and you need to underline that in your Bible. It says, um, in chapter 6, we're going to read through it. And it says, Take heed that you do not do charitable deeds before men to be seen by them. Otherwise, you have no reward from your Father in heaven. Therefore, when you do a charitable deed, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory for men. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. In other words, when I give to be seen by men and I get a, oh, good job, Brother Kobe, a pat on the back, God says, you have received your reward right there. And he says, and we'll just keep reading, but when you do it a charitable deed, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, that your charitable deed may be in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will himself reward you openly. And we'll keep going. It says, And when you pray, you should not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets, that they may be seen by men. As surely I say to you, they have their reward. But you, when you pray, go into your room, and when you have shut the door, pray to your Father who is in the secret place, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you and openly. And he goes in and he, he's, well, we'll just keep going. And when you pray, do not use repetitious as the heathen do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Therefore, do, no, do not be like them, for your Father knows the things you have need of before you ask of him. And then he goes into the, to the prayer and he's teaching them how to pray. And, and a lot of times we think this is the Lord's prayer and this is a whole nother message. But this is, he says, pray in this manner. This ain't the Lord's prayer. It says, pray in this manner. And he goes through and he teaches, and we're going to skip on. Um, go on to 14 for if you, uh, let's see here. Oh, there you go. Uh, go on down to 16. It says, moreover, when you fast, do not be like the hypocrites with a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces that they may appear to, be, to men to be fasting. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. But you, when you fast, anoint your head and wash your feet. In other words, get your house in order, get cleaned up, get ready. It's it's not going to be hot. It's not going to be easy. Get yourself together. And uh, but when you fast, anoint your head and your face and wash your, uh, wash your face, so that you do not appear to men to be fasting. But your Father who sees in secret. Who is in the secret place, I'm sorry, and, and your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. And when we fast, it quiets our flesh. It's, it's noise and, and what we as human nature think is good. A lot of time it, it's good, it feels good, but it ain't always good for me. Does that make sense? Hey, I need to, I need to, uh, I need to, I need to cut loose of this, whatever it is. And, and yeah, it makes me feel good, but it ain't good for me. And so God's saying, I'm taking you somewhere. I need you to leave that behind. And so you need to go at this fast with this mindset of, okay, God, what do you need me to give up so that you can get me to my end goal? Okay, where I'm headed, what can't go to me? What cannot go with me to my to my end goal here? And uh, we'll keep going here. And uh, so we are able to hear from the Lord to get a vision for what God has for us. 
And our, our, our saved spirit is Israel. And anytime God talks about Israel in the Old Testament, it's our saved spirit. Does that make sense? And our flesh is Saul. Everybody in here say, I am Israel. I am Israel. Go to 1 Samuel chapter 15. And we're going to read here. And uh, This is Samuel comes to Saul and he says, Hey, the Lord tells you to go in and we're going to take out the Amalekites. And uh, the Amalekites, I'll give you a rundown, but it's a worldly system and it's evil. And they were relentless enemies of Israel all throughout the Old Testament. So when the Lord says, hey, I want you to go in, you're going to take out the Amalekites. And so uh, Samuel goes to Saul and he says, hey, the Lord says you need to go take out the Amalekites. And so you as a Christian, it's, we're, we're coming in and we're saying, hey, you need to take out some things that's in your, in your life that's a worldly system, that's evil, that's holding you back. And, and we're going to go in and it says, Samuel also said to Saul, The Lord sent me to anoint you king over his people, over Israel. Now therefore heed the voice of the words of the Lord. Thus says the Lord of hosts, I will punish Amalek for what he did to Israel, how he is, uh, ambushed him on the way egypt and he come up and he says go and attack amalek and utterly destroy all that they have and do not spare them but kill both and he goes down he's telling him everything to kill and you can continue reading and uh we'll go to chapter four and he says so saul gathered the people together and numbered them uh in talmain talaim two thousand foot soldiers and ten thousand men of judah and and saul came up to the city of amalek and lay in wait in the valley then saul said to Kenites, go depart and sit down from among the Malachites, lest I destroy you with them. For you showed kindness to all the children of Israel when they came up out of Egypt. So Kenites departed from the Amalekites. In other words, Saul's putting his spin on what God's already told him to do. He says, you destroy everything. And, there, and a lot of times there's some things hanging in my, in my closet. Uh, I remember a time in my life when the Lord... He wanted me to get off social media, and this is back seven, eight years ago. And and I, me personally, I, I take it, I take it personally, uh, probably more than I should when people have, you know, they get on um, social media. I'm I'm really rough on the people around me about social media to the point where I probably shouldn't. Sometimes, you know, it's just learning. It's it's learning how to be a grown up and know when to hush and know when to say. But. <laughs> I'm definitely working on it. And uh, so I remember God telling me, hey, you need to go in and you're going to just, you're going to, you're going to delete this. You're going to get rid of it. And, and a lot of times you can sign out or you can do this, but you can always pick it back up anytime you want to. And the Lord says, no, I said, get rid of it because, because what it's doing is it's holding you back from what I've got. I need to put inside of you all this time you're spending on this, these things that mean nothing. I could be I could be pouring my spirit into you, like Taylor and I were talking the other day. We we were talking about um, when I I was thinking like maybe one or two hours a day people spend on their phones, whether it's on your tablet, and and I'm not talking about uh, I'm saying phones as a tool, not a not a not playtime. You know this phones are a tool, but they're also people take it too far, and so Taylor and I were talking. And I was like, you know, if I took two hours, uh, even one hours, one hour a day every day for a year, that's 365 hours in one year. I could learn a new language in one year, you know. And what could you do with a new language? Yeah. You know, you know, David would do well with a new language. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> exactly. But you know, and she was saying it's like upwards of four hours a day people spend in in in. A neutral time like just in neutral I'm just in neutral doing nothing just you know and so if four you you can do the math on that it's 400 and four hours a I'm sorry four hours a day times 365 days a year what could you do in one year that could change your life for the rest of your life that could change somebody else's life for the rest of their life you know what I'm saying that goes back to what Jim was saying you don't ever know and God's sitting here trying to tell you something, and you can't get up, you can't quit scrolling long enough to, 
you know. And so God, I remember God comes in and he says, you destroy the worldly system that, I've, that you picked up. And, I, and, and a lot of times I was just, oh, well, I'll just delete some of it. And God, he comes back. And if you continue reading in there, well, man, he gets really mad at Saul. And he tells Saul, hey, I told you to kill him. And, and we can continue reading. And uh, it says, uh, let's go here. Okay, we'll go to uh, verse 10. It says, now the word of the Lord, uh, this is after he goes in, Saul goes in and he, he takes the first, God tells him, wipe at it out. He, he, he says, you clear it out. I don't want nothing standing. You take it all out. You get rid of every bit of it. So he goes in there and he keeps the best of everything. Saul puts his spin on it just like we do as humans sometimes. We, we want, hey, I'll just, I'll keep this because uh, I can use it later. You know what I mean? When knowing that God can see what you're doing. And, and I've been there. I can teach this and I can preach this because I've been there. When God says, hey, I told you to do that and you didn't do this. And so this is what's going to happen now. And there's always consequences to, to good or bad choices. But, and he says, in verse 10, it says, now the word of the Lord uh, came to Samuel saying, I regret, I greatly res regret that I have uh, set up Saul as king, for he has turned back from following me and has not performed my commandments. And, I, and it grieved Samuel, and he cried out to the Lord all night. So when Samuel rose in the morning to meet Saul, it was told to Samuel, saying, Saul went out to uh, Carmel, and indeed he set up monuments for himself, and um, he has gone he has gone on around, passed by, and gone by to Gilgal. Then Samuel went to Saul and, so, and said to Saul, Blessed are you of the Lord. I'm sorry. Then Samuel went to Saul, and Saul said to him, Blessed are you of the Lord. I have performed the commandment of the Lord. But, but Samuel said, What then is this bleeding of the sheep in my ears and the lowing of the auctions which I have heard? And you skips down, and I mean, Samuel is laying into Saul. And he's, in other words, I, the Lord told me to tell you to do this, and you didn't do it. And now you're coming back, and you're, you're going to bring, bring back, you know, you're trying to tell me all the good that you did after God told you to, hey, just get rid of it. Just get rid of it. And, he's, and he goes down in 22, and this is where, you know, the, this is where, we'll just continue reading. But in verse 22, it says, so Samuel said, has the Lord... Has the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifice, as in as in as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to heed the fat than the fat of rams. For rebellion is is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is the iniquity and the idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, He shall reject you from being king. And what I want to ask you right now is what are your Amalekites? What is the Lord call, telling you to take out this morning as we begin this fast? You know, I, I was getting, I'm, I'm a coffee drinker. I like coffee. And I mean, I got up this morning. It is like 530. I'm going to run out there and feed the horses. And like, I got a routine. I'm going to get the coffee. I'm going to get ready. And then by the time I grab that coffee and I'm out the door and I'm like, I go in there, and I'm like, the Lord's like, don't drink that coffee this morning. I'm like, I got to preach. <laughs> I need that coffee. Uh, Lee, like, and so, uh, man, it's been tough all morning, you know, because my flesh is saying, I want coffee. Yeah, my, you know, like, you got a little bit of a mild headache, you know, and, and so you're starting this fast, and, and, and it's, you know, I don't know. I don't know why he said don't do it. It doesn't really matter to me why he said don't drink the coffee. But maybe it was just an obedience test so I could stand up here this morning and give this word. And so what is the Lord telling you to take out? You know, I, I went through a time in my life where I had some, um, I had friends in my life that weren't necessarily good for me. Were they bad people? No. Some, some people... I, I still have relationships, but the Lord, I remember the Lord taking me through a period in my life where God says, hey, um, just not right now. You know, that, that's bad timing for that relationship. And God wants greatness and he wants goodness for that relationship. And he wants goodness for those people. But maybe that ain't with you at that time. 
And so, hey, is there a, is there a relation? I, I don't. I keep wanting to say toxic, but I, I don't want to go. You know, I, I because people are people. We're 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 out to we're out for people. We're in the people business, and so. What are what relationships this morning do you need to put aside that are in your way, or what what do I need? What relationships are in my way with God this morning that I need to put aside? And maybe maybe God's just not maybe He's not telling you for good. But I know there are a lot of friends. I had a lot of friends, and 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 a lot of them listened to this. And, and there was just a time in my life where God was like, "Hey, I need you to go away. I need you to get away from that right now." I love those guys. I still love them. I still get to talk to them. I still minister to them. You know what I mean? But I was glad I took that step because at the time they couldn't see that. They just thought I was being hateful. And, and I was like, I, I wanted, to, uh, I wanted to, to see my heart because I want, God was telling me, hey, you need to move on. You, you need to go do these things. And I want to pour, I want to download some stuff in you. Now I can, I can go back to those friends and I can minister to those guys. You know what I mean? I, ha I still have influence with them, but it, it goes back to the Lord told me to move on, and I had to move on. And, and, I, and, I, and any time the Lord's telling you to move on, it may be just for a minute. You know, but you, like Jim said and David, you let God do his job. And, and, it, and it's better to obey than it is to sacrifice. And uh, this is kind of where I stop and, and, and your own relationship starts with God. The guy standing back here cannot make this decision for you. You know, I, I remember we were uh, there at the, the event, you know, he just took a minute and, and, hey, what do I need to get rid of? What do I need to let go of? And it's your decision. You can, you have a choice. Like Taylor said Wednesday night, uh, she, she was talking about, I, I can disrupt the will of God in my life by making poor choices. And so this morning, you have a choice to make. You can make a good choice. You could choose life or you can choose death. You could choose the narrow way where God's saying, hey, I want to lead you this way, but it's, you're going to be alone. And it's always the darkest at midnight, you know, in the middle of this fast when it's, man, I want that coffee bad. You know, I can't, I, I got to, I, a lot of people drink coffee and they shake. I got to drink coffee to quit shaking, you know. <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah, or whatever it is in your life that, and, uh, Aside from, what, aside from what is going on in the world today, if God says, hey, no matter what, and, and God is saying this because we, we live on, if you're a Christian, we live in a different system. We don't, we don't live by the world's standards. So when God says, hey, no matter what's going on, aside from everything that's going on in the world today, what do you want to look back on at this time next year and say, I got, a, I got out of it what I set for? What I, what I want to be, look right here, I want to stand here in 2022 on December 31st and look back and say, God did everything he said he was going to do because I obeyed him. And so I want to challenge your thinking with that this morning. And uh, as you have New Year's resolutions, you, your new goals for the year, your fast, what decisions do I need to make today, right now, to start that process? to get that process going. What do I need to do right now to get to that end goal? And uh, it is a process. Uh, like our, uh, our cattle operation over in, in Hull, we, we have a lot of Brahmin influence. And so this year we had Brahmin bulls on Brahmin cows. Well, the, the cell barns don't like Brahmin cows. They, they're too much ear, they're too, there's, uh, there's just a long list, but of why they don't like them but so we had to change our program and so we started six months ago changing our program for what we're going to see next year we won't see a result of this change until next year we started six months ago here we are right now in the middle and in in and in six months we're going to see a difference of what 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 we did to change this we changed our whole program and so that's what you're going to have to do. You may not, you may get to the end of this fast and, and ain't nothing changed. You know what I mean? You're fasting for something and God's saying, you, you're like, well, God, in 21 days I fasted uh, what, uh, whatever. I don't know. You just fill in the blank and, and uh, Lord, nothing happened. What's going on? 
And, but you, and I want to encourage you. Yeah, you, you're going to do that, and you and and I promise you that if you can stick it out and you can see it through, you will see fruit from it. Yeah. It may not be at the end of twenty. It may not be February first. Yeah. It might be February first of next year. Yeah. You know what I mean? The decisions you make today will set you up for what's going on in the future. And so in Mark twenty eleven twenty four, you know, take the time and ask God. He says in Mark eleven twenty four. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you play, when you pray, believe that you have received them, and 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 that you will have them. You got to see yourself in that goal, but you got to want it and you got to go get it. It's not going to be handed to you. Um, we we all we get these young guys out, or I don't, um, Josh and just in the bull business. And I was I remember I was sitting in the barber shop about. I was about a year ago, and it was lined up. And I walk in, this guy's talking about bull riding, you know, and I, I just kind of get in my chair, and I, like, lean back because I'm like, I don't want to. I ain't getting in this conversation with this guy, you know. And he was talking about, oh, his son's this, and his son's really good. And and and, and all these guys are always coming up. Because we do work together, and, and, and they see me apart, people will ask me, hey, what about bull riding? I want to be a bull rider. And I always ask them, how many pull-ups can you do? You know, and they just look at me like, what's that got to do with anything? Yeah. Well, how hard do you want to work at it? That's right. you, you, you do, if you don't eat, sleep, and breathe it, you know what I mean? If you don't set your mind to your goal, yeah. and, you, and it's not part of your everyday life, if you don't eat it, sleep it, and breathe it, you just yeah. give it up. Don't waste your time. You know what I'm saying? And so um, you have to get the vision. And see yourself there and work that work it backwards. You know, hey, if you if you want a gold buckle or whatever that is, I don't know. You you set that goal and you go after it, but you need to see yourself in that in that position of, of in that goal of of I don't know, winning or or whatever you would call it. And then what do I need you need you need to work that plan backwards and what steps do I need to take starting now to get to that goal? What needs to stay off? What do I need to fast in this 20 day, 21 day fast? He was talking about food. You you let the Lord let like I tell guys, let your conscience be your guide. You know, and I, I'm not sure that's always right, but it's funny. <laughs> and uh, and uh, yeah, so you know, let the Lord do His job this morning, and and He'll let you know what you need to get rid of, and what you need to let go of to get to your end end dream. Um, I, I hate to sound like a broken record and just keep on and on, but um, what do what do I need to get rid of this morning for that vision to be a reality? Let's start by saying what I need to leave behind to get that started. Is it social media? Uh, is it your you know your phones? I, you guys are going to have to answer that question. I cannot answer it for you. But Taylor and I we were having some trouble with with Cass a while back, and and. Cass is, you know, everybody in here knows Cass. I mean, he's not, he don't sit still. You know what I mean? He, he, he is all over the place, but he was having behavioral issues. And this is kind of why the, the phones and the tablets scare me a little. And, 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 and you guys need to decipher this because um, I'm going to put my, I'm going to put my take on this. And, and as a, uh, as a man standing behind the pulpit, you guys need to decipher what I'm about to tell you because it's, a, it's each, to each their own on this. And so what we were having, we were having behavioral issues with Cass. And what it was was we were letting him watch certain TV shows and do certain things. And, and, and I would just, rather than just letting him come outside, I would just, leave, I would just okay, I can get ten times more done with Cass in the house plugged into a TV than I can with him, you know, right here beside me. I thought he was right there, but he's, you know, he's <laughs> over there now. You know what I'm saying? I look down, he's not. And so I would just, it's easy just, hey, go in the house with your mom. Right. You know what I mean? She she ain't doing it, obvious, you know. Like, <laughs> but that's that's not true. My wife's a stay-at-home mom and it's it's a full-time job you know what I mean? but guys think that right guys think that oh should you just go there with your mom she, yeah guys think that and my wife is a she is a full-time it is a full-time job we have two sons 
and and yeah, just to watch cats. But yeah, now now we have two of those. So um, if you're a stay-at-home mom, you are a champion. Uh, just honor that for sure. And uh, my wife will be happy. <laughs> I said that. And so. Uh, anyways, we were having trouble, and, and he would get to where he was hitting kids, and he was getting in trouble, and I was having to whoop him. Like one time, Taylor called me, <laughs> and she's like, you got to come whip him. And I was like, why? Because I'm tired of whipping him. And I was like, well, I ain't even I ain't even got home yet. You're calling me. Obviously, it's bad, you know. So I go in there. I was like, what would you do? Oh, I, he hit his cousin in the face with a little metal hay ring, and he just, and just stood there like, is anybody going to do anything about it, you know? And so we had to get him, get him in trouble, and, and we were going along there, and uh, it was just more than I wanted to. You know, as, oh, as men, it's like, well, I'll just whoop it out of him, you know. And, 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 and we, Taylor got to doing some research, and me, I'm the first guy to be like, I ain't doing that crap. You know what I mean? I, you take that research, I'm just going to whip it out of him, you know. <laughs> well, finally, I'm just like, I'm tired of whipping, out, whipping it out of him, you know, and so... Taylor, uh, the Lord was like, hey, sit this one out. And, and that's when I, the Lord, I was, remember having this conversation, and the Lord said, hey, sit this one out. And you got to be grown up enough to do that in your marriage. <laughs> hey, when, when, when Cass comes outside with me, she trusts that he's in good hands. With all we have going on out there, she always trusts that he's in good hands. And so when he goes inside, I got to trust the same. He's in good hands. Mama's taking care of him. And the Lord was like, hey, sit this one out. And so she goes into these researches. And um, and, and, and finds out that some things that we had been letting him watch was, was uh, it's, it was causing him what is overstimulating. She can tell you all this. If you, if you have any questions, get with Taylor. And she'll get you fixed up. But anyways... And I knew it was I knew it was bad when I was sitting in church one day and you know like when you're on staff here it's like your kids are the worst you know it's like nobody likes the preacher's kids cuz they're the bad kids you know or whatever so I was sitting in I was sitting here one day and the uh, big Jim comes in and he goes hey they need you in the kids room and I'm like oh I see and so so I walk out I walk down the hallway and I Cassie's looking through that middle door there that metal door and I mean, he's crying, and Miss Penny's got him by the arm, and I opened the, or I'm sorry, not by the arm, by the hand, and he's crying, he's in trouble, you know, and, and so I go in there, and I said, uh, I open the door, and I look up at Paul, and he goes, he just hit Miss Penny, and I was like, oh, you see how big that guy is, you know, like, I was like, I'll take care of it, Mr. Paul, <laughs> and so, so I go get him, and uh, boy, I walk him, and I said, buddy, you're in trouble, because, you know, I, I'd rather me hit you than him hit me for hitting his wife. You know what I mean? <laughs> you got to pick smaller guys. Uh, anyway, so I go down there, and I get him. I take him in there, and he says, Dad, I ain't got my belt. I said, don't worry, son, I got mine. And so <laughs> so I whip him. I get him straightened out. I tell him why he can't. And, I, you know, and all this, it's like it's adding up. And I'm like, man, what? we're not mean people. Taylor and I are not mean people. We don't want to hit people. Where is this coming from? So what we begin to do was we begin to figure out what needed to leave his life. What he didn't need anymore. What he did need. Okay, so we, she did the studies and, and uh, it's a, dopamine is a type of neurotransmitter. And, and, it, and this can be in adults. It can be, it's, it's not just little kids. It's from one to a hundred. And so... Your body makes it, and your nervous system uses it to send a, a message between nerve cells. That's why it's called, sometimes called a chemical mess messenger. This is why phones and tablets are dangerous to me, because we get hooked in there, and every time you, you get a fix, it's like drugs and alcohol. Every time you get a fix, and, and that's, this is where these cell phones are just dangerous. And I'm telling you, I want you guys to decipher this. Don't take my word for it. If you're having behavioral issues, if you're having trouble in your own life getting through the day, this is where this fast starts. Let God do his job and, and decipher this for yourself. Go, go and research. Or, or You let God do this. Don't, don't take my word for it because I never want my word to get ahead of what God's doing. And so um, your brain can only retain a certain amount of information. 
Once your tank is full, that's it. And I want to ask you this morning, what are you feeding it? And does that line up with your end goal? Don't have the mindset, God, what do I need to fast this year? Because this year, this new season. But God, what do I need to let go of right now so I can get to where you're taking me? Not I hope I make it. And if you would stand with me, we're going to get ready to close. And 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, it says, But it is written, Eye is not seen, nor hear is heard, ear is heard, nor enter the heart of the man the things which God has prepared for those who have loved him. And that goes back to those messages. I think um, Haley and Keisha had preached about that teddy bear. Every time I speak to somebody here lately, I see Jesus bent over and that little girl's holding that teddy bear. And she don't want to let go of that teddy bear. And she's trying to hide it from him so he won't take it. And he's bent over and he's trying to get her to give him that teddy bear. But he, behind his back, she can't see it. There's a way bigger teddy bear. And that, that right there is a powerful, powerful, that's so powerful. What do you have that you're trying to hide from God that you don't want to let go of this morning? Because he wants to take you somewhere further in life. He wants to give you so much more. And so when you start this fast this morning or today, just keep that in mind. Don't come at it with the mindset, I have to give this up. It's, I want to give this up because God's got something bigger and better for me in my life and where he's taking me. And so we're going to sing this morning and, and get going there. And, and we're just going to take a brief moment. If We're going to give you the opportunity to get that. To, to set your mind right and to set your goal as we go into this fast we just want to take a moment and, and David's here and there's uh, Kent and Missy there, there's people, there's spiritual leaders in your life that are here if you need to look, if you need to go get with them or if you just want to come up and say Lord I need that, I want that vision, I need that vision for my life because where he says I'll give you the vision and I'll give you the provisions and, and, and when God gives you a vision he says, I will give you the provisions. And that provision, that word means it, it's the tools you need to get the job done. So anytime God gives you a goal or he sets a goal in your mind or he gives you a vision, he will give you the tools you need to get it done. He will not leave you nor forsake you.